we generally introduced resampling in the bootstrap in the previous video, but now we're going to talk actually in depth about the bootstrap procedure and how we could do it, and we're going to do this by looking at an example. So in this example, we have 1,009 babies that were born in North Carolina in 2004. So this is a random sample, so it should be representative of the population. All right, so we're interested in the baby's birth weights, and this is because baby's birth weights can be linked to health conditions later in life, um, such as like diabetes, obesity, that sort of thing. All right, so we're looking at baby's birth weights, and we'd like to have a confidence interval for mu, which is the mean baby's birth weight. So if we had normally distributed data, then we could go ahead and use the procedures that we learned about um, in a couple videos ago. But birth weights are not necessarily normally distributed, and the sample size might not be large enough for the central limit theorem to have kicked in. All right, so what are we supposed to do? Well, we're going to be looking at this bootstrap procedure. So what this hinges on is the fact that we have a random sample. So since we have a random sample, that means that our random sample is representative of our population. So it's like we have a mini little population. So we could essentially treat this original sample as the population and resample from it with replacement. So we're thinking about simulating sampling from the original population again. And so that means that we're going to need to create these fake samples, these simulated samples. Okay, so our original sample size was n equals 1009. So what we would like to do is keep taking samples of 1009 babies and calculate the mean birth weight for that sample of 1009 babies. All right, so for each resample, we're calculating the mean weight for those 1009 babies. And then we're going to keep track of all of those means. All right, so what we're going to do is do this repeatedly and keep calculating the statistic for each one. So we start off with our original sample. of 1,009 babies. We'd like the sampling distribution for x bar. But we don't have it, so the next best thing is to simulate the sampling distribution of x bar. So we're going to use our original sample to simulate the sampling distribution for x bar. So we're going to do this, a, this these next few steps a large number of times. So maybe we would do this like 10,000 times or 100,000 times or something like that. Okay, so what are we going to do lots of times? We're going to look back at our original sample of 1,009 babies. We're going to randomly select 1,009 of these observations with replacement. Okay, so since we're sampling them with replacement, that means we're not going to get the exact same sample every time, right? Because if we sampled these without replacement, then we would just be sampling every single baby once, and that would be pretty stupid because then we'd get the exact same sample 
But here what we're doing is we're sampling with replacement. So some of these original 1009 babies birth weights are going to be in this new sample once or twice or three or four times and other babies will not be in there at all. All right, so once we randomly select 1009 observations from our original sample with replacement, we're going to call that our resample. So this is one resample that we've done. Now with that resample, we're going to calculate the mean or whatever statistic. But here we're looking for the sampling distribution for x bar. So we're going to calculate that resample's mean. So once we calculate that mean, we're going to store it somewhere. We're going to keep track of it. So maybe if we have some distribution going, maybe this is like 10, 8, and this is pounds. Um, then say this resample had a mean of 9.7, then maybe we'd keep track of that and then keep doing our resamples so that we eventually get this, whatever the distribution would look like. All right, so this is what we do over and over and over. We randomly resample from the original sample, and we make sure that the sample is the same size, and then we're doing that with replacement. And then from that one resample, we're going to calculate its mean or whatever statistic we're interested in and store it somewhere. So once we've done that a huge number of times, 10,000, 100,000, whatever, then we go look at all of those means that we've calculated. So we go look at all the means that we have simulated, and these are put into a distribution, and that's called a bootstrap distribution. So we've created our bootstrap distribution by doing this resampling um, process a huge number of times. Then once we have this bootstrap distribution, we know that this is actually approximating the sampling distribution of x bar. So that's approximating the sampling distribution of x bar. So that means that now, since we've approximated the sampling distribution of x bar, we can do whatever we want with that bootstrap distribution. So a useful thing might be to um, ca uh, calculate a confidence interval or something like that. And then more generally, if we wanted to create a sampling distribution for whatever statistic, so say we have some statistic theta hat, we want to get its sampling distribution, we would do this same procedure. We would randomly select 1009 observations to create our resample, and then we would calculate whatever that stat is. So we calculate that sample's theta hat and store it. Then we would look at all of the theta hats we've simulated. So this is our bootstrap distribution, which approximates the sampling distribution of theta hat. So theta hat could be the mean, it could be something else, maybe like variance, standard deviation, whatever. <laughs>